Portmanteau is a portmanteau, as is Darbados. Today's video was inspired by Shotgun Barbers, my local and sort of favourite barbers. It's the only one I go to. They have a very funny Instagram page, which I recommend you follow. One of their posts was about two of their barbers, which are off to a festival in Derbyshire. And if you're American, yes, that's where the wizards live. Either way, the weekend that this festival is taking place in Derbyshire is looking like it's going to be one of the wettest, one of the wettest weekends on record since records began back in the Victorian times. Which of course led them to post some sarcastic portmanteaus and that got me thinking, oh what is actually a portmanteau and how are you meant to say it even though I'm saying it right it always sounds like I'm saying it wrong. Those two funny portmanteaus they were using was Abu Dhabi and Darbados. That gave me enough of a laugh this morning to get me out of my pit of sadness, which is me waking up every morning, basically. But what does it all mean? A portmanteau is a blended word, which doesn't mean it's drunk. It means that it is two words which have been put together, but only use parts of those original words. I.e. when you pull the portmanteau back into its constituent parts, you would still, you would end up with only parts of words left. I.e brunch so breakfast and lunch but you only have the br and the unch in there so if you pull them two apart you don't have the whole of breakfast and you don't have the whole of lunch or abu dhabi part abu dhabi and part dhabi but if we pull it apart we find that we have only some of abu dhabi and all of dhabi or darbados where it's part dhabi but if you pull it apart and also part barbada you get the idea now I should say at this stage that portmanteaus are not compound words. Compound words are where you place two whole words together to make a new word. So if you were to pull that new word apart, you'd still have two whole words or more whole words, depending on how many you've put together to make a new word. Examples are somewhere, grandmother, airport, uh, railroad, superstructure, which sounds a little bit like I'm on Blade Runner and I'm having to do that test at the end of every assignment that I've done to make sure that I'm not broken. So if you were to break up any of those words I've just said, then you would find that actually they would still be complete. So railroad would still be rail and road and superstructure would still be super and structure. As most of you will know, the Germans are masters at this and end up with words which are literally tens of, of letters long, it's, it's sort of decades of letters we might say actually. I would suggest you look up German compound nouns for the full fun, I might even do a video on it at some point. Lastly, portmanteaus are not contractions. Contractions are where you have two words which appear consecutively in a sentence and then what you do is you smush them together and then you stick an apostrophe into the bit where you've taken some letters out so that it isn't a compound word, it's a contraction, it's contracted. So does not and doesn't, so does not, obviously you know how to spell that, but doesn't, you'd stick an apostrophe between the N and the T to denote that you've lost the O. Or it's and it, you stick an apostrophe between the T and the S to denote that you've lost the I. The etymology of the word put, put, the etymology of the word portmanteau is uncontested and completely clear, which is a massive refreshing change. It was first coined by Lewis Carroll in his book Alice Through the Looking Glass, aka Alice in Wonderland, the sequel. According to etymology.com, and I may have read this wrong, so correct me if I'm wrong, but it, Lewis Carroll had already been using it for 10 years, so he first started using portmanteaus in the sense of the word in 1872, but didn't actually coin the phrase until 1882. Lewis based the word on an old French carry case called a portmanteau, which had two separate compartments which were actually joined. So even though there were two compartments, two separate compartments, there was a join between them. The word can be broken down into porter, hence porters in hotels meaning to carry, and manteau, meaning to cloak. Now the burning question, is portmanteau actually a portmanteau? Well, some say no, but it probably is, actually. There is at least one argument online that says that portmanteau is a compound word and not a portmanteau itself. Now the argument goes like this, what you do is you split up portmanteau into port and manteau. Now port being an English word, although it does have a French and Latin root, and manteau being the French word. However, 
Though port, as I've just said, does have a French and Latin root, the sense that it's used is slightly different, and actually the root is slightly different, so it doesn't quite work. What I would suggest is that portmanteau is made up of to two words, toe words, it's not made up of toe words, those two words being porter or port, which is P-O-R-T-E, and manteau, which I'm not going to try to spell, it has far too many vowels. Thus, the first half of the word is... There's, there's only part of it. If you break it up, there's only part of it. We're missing that E. So I would say, actually, the portmanteau is a portmanteau. If you've made it this far into the video, then well done. You've completely bucked all of my YouTube statistics, but also you haven't died of boredom. Congratulations. If you've made it this far into the video and you work for Shotgun Barbers, then let me lay down a little gauntlet for you. I will, I would like a free haircut. However, I will do something for that, obviously. What I will do is I will do a live Instagram video where I say Shotgun Barbers 5,000 times and then I'll get a haircut. I mean, if you want to throw in some kind of donation, d d donation, donation, donation to charity, then then also maybe we could do that. I mean, I suppose Red Nose Day isn't that far away. Either way, if you've watched this on YouTube, then you can follow me on Instagram. Sometimes I might do something interesting. And if you've watched this on Instagram, then please go over to YouTube and give me a subscribe and a like and a follow and whatever all that other stuff is that you're meant to do. I, you know, it kind of, it makes me feel good. It feeds my ego. Thank you. I hope you're well, and um, I'll I'll say something, some some more words next week. Bye then.